Hey guys, Heroic Dual Blade here. Today I'll be talking about Vihila. This one was pretty clean. I didn't die. I only have to cleanse twice. So I'm kind of proud of it. When opening in the boss fight, you get a free burst. It does get a little tricky because all her zombies are on top of you. She's smacking you. And when you kill her little homies, they end up a corpse that gives you poison, so you have to be a little careful. Luckily, I get it off right here. And while all that is happening, you have to dodge between all the strings. That's why I play with uh, full transparency. Normally, I, I like to play with opaque skills because, you know, it looks really cool. But I tried that one time and it didn't go very well. So throughout the fight, you'll be weaving through strings, you know, inside those big gaps you see. But you can also take the opportunity to weave between them as they pop off. So you don't always need to hide in the big gaps. Of course, I'm a dual blade, so I have like two iframes that I can take advantage of and I do uh, a lot in this fight. Another thing to keep in mind, at least in my fight, is she's almost at her second stage. Once she gets to this point, she's gonna start throwing full map attacks. And the way the Hello works is there's two versions. There's a purple and a green one. I'll talk about it once she starts throwing them out. Although for me in this fight, she throws mostly green ones, which you have to be in front of her. Right now she's not doing it. Oh, there's one! So yeah, there you go. I go in front of her. And again, I go in front of her. I know that there was a string in front of me, so it was a little dicey, but I knew it was going to pop off. So I prayed that I could get in there soon after. At first, I had a lot of trouble spacing because if you're too close to her, either front or back for her full, full map attack, you're still going to get hit. So the sweet spot I found is you can stay at the tipper of her reaper, of her scythe. When she pulls it back for purple, and when she sort of lines it up in front of her. When you see that animation, just stay at the tip of the blade and you should be okay. Also during this fight, I do get tagged a lot by her blue stun grabby thing. It's not- it, it can be very dangerous. But so long as there's no strings in front of you or behind you, wherever you're gonna get smacked to, you should be fine. Of course, I'm a dual blade, I have iframe privilege, so... It's not totally fair for everybody else. You can also go behind her, and if you're quick enough- Oh wait, it's party time, hold on. Big numbers. I don't normally play with basic damage skin mode. I actually like to play on bladed mode, but big numbers look really cool on screen so I kept it. Alright, we're just, you know, doing DPS stuff. Never want to be on top of the corpses as much as possible. And of course, avoiding her projectiles when she's at stage 2 of her HP. In, in this fight... Oh, there's another green. Well, I can't make it, so I, I frame that one. Privilege? What was I gonna say? Oh, there's another green one! Right there, boom. Where her blade slams, I stand under, and it's safe. There's a gap there that you can see. Alright, and I up jump when, while I'm DPSing her so I can get some damage in while avoiding her projectiles because they do a lot of damage actually. They don't go away once you get hit, they're a little persistent. So you don't want to follow them and you, you just do not want to get hit by them. I'm also trying to get away from this toxic part because that does a lot of damage as well. 
it's definitely sacked some party runs for Vihila where people don't respect it and they pile in the corner because they believe their healing familiars will, ca will carry them, but they cut, cut it a little too close and they die. Like noobs. All right, and we survived her test. No problems. So we're gonna bind, iframe, party time. This fight is pretty simple, honestly. Besides Gloom, this is probably the other easy c 10 boss. After that, it's everyone's Bane, Dark Nell, which is like Lotus 2.0. And what other c 10 bosses are there? I think that's it. Oh, I guess Black Mage, but yeah. Yep, so we're just DPSing her, nothing nothing really crazy, really, really straightforward fight. Avoid the strings, dance between strings. You don't really want to get tagged by the blue grab, but just know if you're used to the timings of the strings coming in and out, and you believe it'll be safe by the time she smacks you, then go ahead and take the slam. Otherwise, use a move that stops your momentum, and 9 times out of 11, you'll be okay. Also, when you're available, just kill her homies because you don't really want them to be lurking around doing damage to you. You want to be in control of where they- oh, there's a green one in the front where her blade is. Boom, and I'm safe. No free damage. Of course, we are in GMS, so we are privileged to have healing familiars. I don't know how Korean Maple Story plays this boss without them. It's so comfy. I tried and it also did not go well. Alright, and as the hourglass ticks down between tests, I try to play it a bit more safe. I don't really want to go ham on her. I switch rings, which I'm still practicing. I have weapon jump 3 as well, including roar. I kind of just- oh, there's a green. So I'm not really sure if I can make the gap, so I iframe that. But as I was saying, I also have weapon jump 3. I did a BA and it honestly didn't do much. Alright, it's party time. Party time in the corner, woo woo! Do blade ASMR noises. Ching 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 ching! Honestly, I get so lucky there. I don't know how I managed not to get tagged there, but it was pretty, pretty pog. All right, so I think I'm trying to switch off my- oh, it's it's purple. I can't get a good spot, so I just get away. But yeah, I've been practicing switching rings since I got my roar and my weapon jump. It's It makes certain fights a little bit more difficult. Like in Dark Nell, it's really dicey, of course. In Black Mage, I also find it quite dicey, so I kind of just stick to my roar 3. It, it does way more damage than my weapon jump, and I, I find it to be more worth just sticking to one. You know, stick to what's comfortable for you, because you know what they say, you do zero damage when you're dead. Alright, so she summoned Lotus. He is a potential hazard, so we try to blast him while we can. Oh, and there's Damien too. I think Lotus appeared earlier, but I just didn't take note. Yep, it's just run-of-the-mill dummy fight. Just keep smacking her around and you'll win eventually. I used to play this fight really, really safe. I would like cleanse really often. Oh, there's a, there's a green. Boom, see the tip of her scythe. You see how she lines it up before she swings? You want to stay at the tip. That's, for me so far, has been the ideal placement. The ideal positioning to, to not take like half your health. Originally, I would say really close to her front or back, and I would still get tagged, and that would be like, what the fuck? Am I bugged? But it was just a matter of spacing. Alright, I'm on top of poison, so I'll take the slap away, and then I have a lot of time too on the hourglass between 
the next test, so I, I figure it's a safe bet to take. Alright, we are setting up a roar because it's almost party time again. Uh, I'm looking at the Shadow Walker buff cooldown, so I'm I'm kind of doing it based off that. Iframe privilege and party time soon? Or am I gonna wait until the next test? Oh, I got tagged there, not perfect run. I'm a noob, I'm a noob! Need to get good. Oh, I'm cleansing now because I, I want I want five green skulls. Unfortunately, that was kind of a really sussy situation. I was stuck. She was about to FMA. I was definitely gonna get hit. But like I keep saying, dual blade privilege, iframe. Also, I'm using um the special node, auto recovery two. It heals you all the way. 30 seconds uh, every time you use a skill. Uh, I know some people probably prefer Fatal Strike, but I find it really hard to time. I only use it for like super optimal sweaty setups, like when I'm going into BM phase one and I can time exactly when I know it's gonna pop. But in like a fight where it's just kind of fucking random, I'm just gonna swap it off. I mean, I'll take it if it's the only special note to have, but if I can use auto recovery, I will. And yeah, she's almost dead. There's nothing really left to say. I didn't include the loot room in this one because I already have a 22 sauce. Flex. Um, so yeah, and I didn't get anything anyway, so... I didn't get anything at all this week from any of my weekly pitches. So I have nothing to tap, and now I gotta wait another week. That's maple story for ya. Alright, now I'm just kinda waiting for her to die. By this point, I kinda don't give a crap, so I kinda just take the red skull. Even if I were to die with that skull, I'll, I'll clutch it out or something. Yeah, just kind of smacking her in the corner. GG's, that's it. 